Okay, hello everyone. Today is going to be a different video than normal. I am going to be doing a mega benchmark of many games on a RTX 3060 Ti graphics card. So the specs, as you can see, is a NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 Ti with the latest drivers. As you can see, the latest drivers are installed on the system. 16 gigabytes of RAM, a 4K monitor. Yep, 4K monitors that because that's my native monitor, 60 hertz, i7-10700, and a, ooh, just some storage, one terabyte SSD, two one terabyte SSDs actually. And as you can see from Tech Power Up GPU-Z, the specs are here. RTX 3060 Ti, eight nanometer GA104, you know, all the specs of the 3060 Ti. It's overclocked for the memory by 250 me megahertz and 130 megahertz on the course so that should hopefully make it a little bit faster PCI Express resizable bar is enabled for the games that supported and Anyways, let's waste no more time the first game is Okay, so the first game up is counter-strike go or CS go and we are going to be playing it at the 1440p resolution Which is a very adequate resolution for this GPU especially in a game like this with the very low settings, 8 times MSA, and high settings. Well, high textures at least, not high settings. Everything else is either on very low or disabled, except like texture streaming and stuff like that, because it doesn't really affect performance. But yeah, so let's see how many FPS we get. I assume we're going to be CPU bound, because, you know, it's 1440p and with a 10700. I know that sounds crazy, but... The, my CPU isn't powerful enough, really, in this game to drive more than, like, 300 FPS. But let's see. And let's start now. And, okay, we are in, and the match is already five minutes in. So we're not going to be winning anything unless I get a serious comeback. Okay, yeah, no, I'm not going to be getting a serious comeback if I'm uh, those kinds of things you know those kinds of things but yeah 400 frames per second 300 to 400 that is absolutely not actually not very insane for CSGO but still great performance okay nice no but I got a few kills God damn you. Nice. Nah. Okay. Damn it. Come on. Come on, where are the people at? No. <laughs> Not going to be getting a comeback in this match. What the heck? Yeah, no. All right, well. Damn it. 
Yeah, but the FPS are really good. The performance is really good. It's a competitive experience. 240 hertz, even 360 hertz experience. And we're still CB bound, even with eight times MSA. Of course, it's low settings, but that's appropriate for a game like CS:GO. It's run at low settings. Come back here. Damn it! No, it's not a freaking a boss and a ball. No. Yeah, I'm not gonna be winning. No. Okay. But even still, I'm not doing too bad considering the game is, you know, five minutes. Oh, it's five minutes late. No, ha ha ha. Damn you, come back. No. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not winning. That's fine. I just wanted to benchmark, not to play anyway. What the? Okay, yeah. But even with five minutes, I got damn close to winning, so. That's an achievement, right? the match and no okay second place for five minutes not terrible 342 fps on average 194 fps one percent lows yeah perfectly playable experience let's move on to the next game now okay so the next game is gta 5 or sorry the second game is gta 5 and it'll be played at 4k using Effectively, max settings, epic say on, everything maxed out, except for a few key options, which high grass quality, which is an FPS killer, normal post effects because motion blur, and advanced settings are extremely performance intensive, so they are all turned off, and they only provide very minimal quality improvements for massive performance drop-ups, so I don't recommend a lot of people use these. So, let's go, and also, yeah, no anti-aliasing aside from the FX AA. No, I'm gonna say. Okay, let's go. And wow. 90 to 100 frames per second. So. And this is with everything maxed out except those options I said. And we are still getting like 80 to 100 FPS. This is crazy. Oh my god. I don't know how to drive in this game. Okay, so let's go. And wow, 100 FPS while driving. This is insane. This is 100 frames per second at 4K with everything maxed out except those options set. The game still looks even really good without the ultra max settings. Of course, you know, it's not ultra max settings, but it's still insanely good looking, obviously. Oh my god. Nope, that, that was pretty bad. Let's get back in. Oh my god, oh my god. Okay, okay. No. Okay, not bad. But damn, this is insane. 100 FPS at 4K. This is some pretty... Okay, okay, okay. No, I just bumped into the thing. 
Okay, let's not try to hit anybody here. Okay, okay. Not hitting anybody. Come on, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Oh my god, there's so many people. No! Chill, what the freak? Move out of the way, why are you just standing there? Oh my god, oh my god! <laughs> okay, I... Yeah. Oh my god, no, the cops are after me now. <sighs> well, let's grab another car, I guess. Okay, so I'm in another car. Let's continue now. Oh my god, can you relax? Bro, I'm gonna get caught. I'm gonna get freaking caught by the cops. Yeah, but the performance is insanely good. Especially in a game that looks as good as Grand Theft Auto V. Now, let's go to the part where the FPS kills. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, oh. <laughs> let's go to the grassy area now. Let's see the FPS if it drops from 60. Oh my god. No. Yeah, it's already dropping into the 80s. Let's see if it drops from 60. And no! 70s! 60s, low 60s. Wow. That's extremely impre- Okay, can you relax? No, 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 no. Oh, wow. That's insanely good. Oh my god, oh my- And I died. Well, that's all. 95 FPS on average. 66, 1% lows. It never drops from 60. It's a- Completely enjoyable experience. Let's move on to the next game now. Game up is Metro Exodus. This is one of the most visually stunning games on the list, but also one of the most demanding. We are going to be playing it at 2560 by 1440 using the ultra settings. This is not max, extreme is, but extreme is pointless. So ultra, no motion blur, no v-sync using ultra ray tracing, quality DLSS, Ray trace reflection, VRS on, off hair works on, tessellation on, advanced physics on, and field of view on this, which doesn't affect performance. These are virtually max, except this. So yeah, 2560 by 440, let's go. And the FPS wow. are... Yeah, I agree, Sam, I agree. The This game looks insanely beautiful. But it's also insanely intensive. Like, look at the... It also stutters for some reason. I think it's due to hair works, but it's very annoying. I can't even benchmark it. Okay, I'm gonna shake the screen. Let's see if it goes away. No, it doesn't. It just persists. Okay, I don't even care about the stuttering. The 1% lows will be inaccurate, but eh. Whatever. But yeah. This is also the most intensive level in the game, Vladivostok. A city in Russia, except torn apart by war and nuclear weapons. And a tidal wave, so that's nice, but no, it's not, but... But, wow. This game truly looks gorgeous. And this is not even a max settings. Although max settings don't even improve performance that much compared to non-max settings. But even with non-max settings, at 1440p, it's not exactly getting the highest FPS in the world. Only around 60 to 70, which is, of course, extremely playable, but... You would ideally want a little bit more than that. Although, actually, it's perfectly playable because it's a single-player game. You don't really need more than 60. So, yeah, walking around this area, we're getting 80s. That's really good. Of course, it's stuttering, which isn't good, but... Wow, just look at the atmosphere. Just wow. This game truly looks gorgeous. Can you please get up here? No, you don't want to? Okay. But wow. 
Come on, Sam, just work with me, please. But damn, this is truly a good looking game. Look at the sunset. This game in general looks absolutely gorgeous. And of course, it's also one of the most demanding games. So, well, at least it has something. Okay, let's go inside now. Eighties, nineties, a hundreds in this cutscene. What else would you have me do? I guess that's all. I'm not greedy. Ha ha. Don't worry, we ain't gonna kill you. The okay, this is just a cutscene. I've already seen this before. Oh, wow, 60s in this area. This area is quite intensive. Okay, yeah, so we killed all of these damn people. But yeah, the performance is really good aside from the stuttering, and the game obviously looks great at ultra settings. So yeah, overall, a very playable experience. Let's move on to the next game. Another thing I wanted to mention before I exit this game is the fact that if you play a 4K with performance DLCs, the game looks substantially better than 1440p of quality while getting not much less FPS, which of course is very nice. So yeah, as you can see in this area, it's getting around 60 while also being at 4K as you can see with the 4K Ultra and the same settings that performance DLSS and it's obviously at 4K and it's getting not much lower than 1440p. So yeah, that's the thing. Around 60s in this area. So and it looks substantially better. I know YouTube's compression will destroy the image quality, but this game looks substantially better at these settings compared to the previous ones. While you know, also looking way better and performing not much worse. So yeah. So yeah, just that was just a notice. And we got, yeah, around 60s to 50s here in this scene at 4K, so yeah. I just wanted to say that. But this video is mostly going to be for about 1440p. But, for example, in games that run well at 1440p, I might bump it up to 4K, because why the hell not? Well, anyways, that's it. Now, it's time to go to the next game. Older Metro, ti Met Metro title, Metro 2033 Redux, of course I'm not testing Metro Last Light Redux because it's basically the same engine, same graphics, yeah, but here we are, Metro 2033 Redux, testing it at 4K, very high settings, max settings in the game, let's go, and we're actually not getting 60 FPS. <sighs> Okay, we are. Okay, okay. It was just loading. I would have expected 60 FPS in a 2014 game. Oh shit! Okay, I almost died from a lack of air. I was like, I'm so used to the Metro Exodus where you don't need a gas mask because the air is actually breathable. You go outside of Moscow. Can you chill? No. Oh my god. It's actually dropping below 60 FPS. In a 2014 game, yeah, this is a 4K absolutely cranked up settings. But still, it's like, really? It's dropping from 60 FPS in a game like this? I really expected better. I really did. Oh my god. I think the performance dropped off from last time. I'm not sure why, but... It doesn't feel as smooth as before. 
where it was getting around like um yeah like almost a hundred FPS at 4K. Now it's like getting lower FPS than Metro Exodus, which I'm not sure how that's possible. Okay, now I'm using normal bullets. I don't want to burn my money. Because you can shoot ammo. No! Wow, look at that cathedral. Wow, the cathedral. Oh my god. Please don't. No, I don't want to die. Wow, it's dropping into the 40s. How is this even... No, but look at the detail. Yeah, this is a 2014 game. But I just want to show you something. Look at the detail. Look at the detail of this cathedral. Of this... Not really cathedral, this church. Wait, it is cathedral. There's church. I'm, I'm, I might be extremely dumb, but... The detail on some of these freaking textures. Yeah, this is a 2014 game, but it still looks good. Well, let's move on to the next game now. Bye. Bye to Metro 2033 Dex. I'm obviously not leaving you guys. Let's move on to the next game now. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Okay, so the next game up is... Fortnite. Why do I do this to myself? We'll be playing the game at 2560 by 4040p. Epic settings, but with a twist. We're using performance mode. <laughs> to get the maximum FPS possible. Which essentially allows me to play the game with more confidence. Anyways, I will be in a game playing now. Okay, and here we are running the game at obviously the same settings as before. You know, epic with performance mode. But it's still kind of like low settings because it's performance mode. And this is an extremely not smooth experience. It's very stuttery. Okay, hopefully the, the thing will go away now. Yes, it went away. Okay, the stutters are not going away. But, yeah, this is a 240 FPS experience. Which is pretty darn good. Of course, the game looks like... <laughs> looks like this, but... It's still a 240 FPS experience. And for a competitive player, it's actually good. Because... You know, less visible things on the screen. Sometimes even getting up to 300. So that's pretty solid. I'm wondering, is the new physics implemented even with performance mode? I would assume not. Yeah, no. Of course they're not. Why would they be implemented? It's just a performance eater, the new physics, probably. Oh, no! There are still new physics for some things in performance mode. Despite it looking like, like utter crap... Performance mode actually still has new physics, so that's pretty cool. Oh wow, look at that. Yeah, it still does it. So even in performance mode we have the we have the trees and stuff, which is actually really cool. It's just the game looks so terrible like this. Four hundred at times. Five hundred when holy shit! So many frames per second. But then you turn around and it gets two forty. So it's extremely inconsistent. But it's generally extremely high FPS. Like this is probably very overkill for most people. But yeah, it's fun to test at least. Look at the scope on the new sniper, that's pretty damn cool. Damn. Can I reach- well, if I look up at the sky, 600 frames per second. 
Which is honestly an insane amount to have. I'm probably just gonna cut some parts of this video out, like, that are boring. Just cut to some more interesting parts. Grammar's is that a wolves? Damn it! Well, that game I was absolutely horrible, but at least we got to see the performance mode. 349 FPS on average, 144 FPS 1% 1 lose. It's a perfectly playable experience if I didn't suck so bad at this game. Well, that's all. <sighs> Let's move on to the next one, I guess. Pfft, Fortnite sucks. Now is Assassin's Creed Odyssey time. <laughs> so I'm going to be playing at ultra high settings with high clouds so everything else is maxed out except clouds because this is the most intensive setting in the game it's an fps killer as you would call it and 4k my native resolution not 1440p but 4k so let's see the performance with these settings and resolution and 4k and wow nearly 60 fps in a game that looks this freaking good okay it's just dropping into the 50s but this is a sightseeing title and a third person game so it's not even necessary to get 60 fps in a game like this of course it's easier to aim with 60 but the performance really isn't bad considering the game looks this amazing and it's at ultra high settings so you can obviously still lower the settings to like very high or high then you would definitely get 60 plus all of the time this area actually we are getting well 70s even okay that's really freaking good oh no I think I got myself in a little bit of a pickle no chill what the hell Spamming is key. Yes, I am still alive. No, stop, please. Stop. Stop. What the hell? How is he? Well, okay, that was a pretty big bug. Okay.
No, I wanted to attack the other guy. Oh wow, this is pretty intense from the beginning. I'm fighting like five guys. Okay, dude, can you relax? Oh my god, no. Okay, this is pretty bad. Nice. No! I can win, I can win, I can win. Yes, ha ha ha. And yeah. Wow, that was a pretty intense fight. And during that fight, it never, I think, dropped from 40 FPS. So yeah, it's a perfectly playable experience. No, I don't want to do that. Wait, should I? Can I kill him? Oh no. Oh shit. Shit! No, 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 that was a mistake. Um, yeah, let's, um, uh, let's die. Not die, let's... Yeah, let's die. Yep, makes sense. No, let's go in the water. Let's go in the damn water. See the performance and the visuals in the water. And, come on, let's go. Dive, please? No! Can you please... Is the water not deep enough? But yeah, 50 FPS. It's not an ideal 60 FPS plus experience, but... Okay, finally I can dive. And wow. It does drop into the 40s, but still, single player title. Perfectly playable. And extremely visually impressive experience. Recom I recommend this game. It is very fun. has a deep storyline. Played this... For I think almost 30 hours and still not even close to finishing. It's probably going to take 100 hours to finish. So yeah, it's really good. It's a really fun game. Well, that's it. Let's move on to the next game. Speaking of water, here we are. In Subnautica, which is a water game, obviously. Okay, so we are going to be playing this game at 4K resolution with high settings, which are max, TA and TA aliasing. All these effects are enabled because I actually like them in a game like this. Let's go. And this game is one that is, I would call, not very optimized because as you can see, it looks pretty decent, but in my opinion, it does not look as good as something like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, yet it performs around the same as Assassin's Creed Odyssey. So, nah, but not good optimization. Of course, it's still a playable experience at around 50 to 60 FPS. So, okay, it does drop into the 4. Wow, this area is extremely intensive. 40 FPS in the red grassy area. So, yeah. But, yeah, the performance is very re very reasonable for the performance you get in something like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, and in this game, it's not. Of course, it's a beautiful and wonderful game. This game is actually one of my favorites, because it's a exploration, it's a free exploration game, which I love free exploration games. And, of course, these are one of them. Let's go into this cave. Let's go into this purple cave, which is very creepy. And yeah. So in this area, around the same FPS. So yeah, it's a playable experience, but not ideal. Of course you can lower the settings to like medium and then you would get 60 FPS, but medium makes the game look kinda bad. So wouldn't exactly recommend medium. But high still looks good. You can maybe lower the anti-aliasing from TA to FXA. Maybe lower the anti-aliasing quality, because I don't think you need high anti-aliasing quality at 4K, but in general this game looks pretty good. Has a nice atmosphere to it. Each biome 
kind of has a atmosphere, different creatures, different plants, different resources, of course. Yeah, check out this game if you have. It was free on Epic. I'm not sure what, how much it is now, but it's a great game. It can run well on lower end PCs, too, at like 1080p, 720p, low settings. So check out this game. It's actually really fun. And yeah, it's performing kind of badly at 4K max on a 3060 Ti. Well, not even badly. Like, 50 FPS is obviously good, but not as it should. I would say this game maybe should get around, like, 60 plus of these settings. Let's write a prawn suit and see how much the performance changes in a prawn suit. Welcome aboard, Captain. Yeah, inside, I would actually do. We are, we actually are getting 60. So let's jump in a prawn suit and see the perf and see the performance. So in a prawn suit, very similar stuff. But the reason I wanted to do it is not because I wanted to test the performance. It's to glide around the map underwater like an absolute maniac. Oh, I love prawn, man. I love this prawn suit. Okay, yeah. Anyways, that's all, guys. Let's see you in... Oh my god, the next game, of course. Oh, and also, wait, before I go... Yeah, that's the seam off. Wait, let me just park my prawn real quick. God damn it. Let me park my prawn. <laughs> I want to show you something before I leave and check out my next game, which is, of course, one of my favorites along with this one. My plant garden! Beautiful! Contains all kinds of different plants. Trying to find every single plant. And look at the moon, look at the aurora. Yeah, simply beautiful. The water also looks fantastic in this game with high water quality. These effects are very intensive, 40s. Well, anyways, that's all. See you in the next game. Now we are playing Cyberpunk using 4K resolution with the Ray Tracing Ultra preset. No motion blur, no film grain. And everything else is on ultra ray, ultra lighting, ultra everything, including ray tracing and DLSS on the ultra performance mode. Let's go. Into these settings. Of course, ultra performance DLSS doesn't really look that good. Okay, hey, what do you want? I heard some soldier just open fire on pedestrians at the pier. If you can swing it, I want him stopped but not killed. Then I'll send the right people for him. More details are on the way. Indeed. Good luck. Of course, it doesn't look like native 4K, as I was saying. But it still looks fantastic. Like, just look at these lens flares. Look at the sun. Yeah, this game sometimes has bugs, it has shimmering, and with DLSS Ultra Performance, it doesn't look like native 4K. But let's be honest, it still looks fantastic, and the ray tracing is super apparent in areas of puddles. Okay, listen, this is a gang. Yeah, this is a gang. Okay, I don't want to grab it. But yeah, 60 FPS. These settings in Cyberpunk is extremely impressive. Let's keep on walking, I guess. Actually, let's call my car. Wait, wait, where's my car? I don't know. But let's just grab a car real quick. Where are all the cars, man? Why are there no cars here? Come on, man. I want a car. <laughs> Get out of here. Okay, so around the same FPS inside a car. 
So that's pretty good. Of course, the shimmering is even more apparent. And oh my god, the ghost thing. Do you see that? Like there, next to the car trail. There's like multiple cars showing up. Yeah, that they need to fix that. That's extremely apparent using DLSS. Oh my god. This area, 50s. Yeah, we're entering a more intensive area now. I like the music though. And yeah, so that's pretty dope. Wow, 40s and 50s in, an air, in a heavily... 30s even! Okay, that's a insanely intensive. Because I'm actually CPU bound using those settings. If I'm in a purely GPU bound scenario, like looking here, 50s. So that's very interesting. Let's get another car. Give me your car. Give me your freaking car. Yeah, that's right. Run. Why are you- oh my god, no, 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 what the heck? How did they do that? How- and by the way, 50s, 50s in this area, so that's extremely intensive. Yeah, the ghost thing though is extremely apparent using DLSS. Oh my god. Well, what the heck is going on? Yo, yo, why are they attacking me? Not even doing anything. Chill. Well, anyways, that's all. Wait, should I fight? Yeah, why the hell not? Who should I help though? Nah, I don't really know. I just want to shoot shit. What the hell? Why are they shooting me? Yo! Okay, that's it. So yeah, not really dropping during fight. Okay, okay. Out of ammo, hold on. No. And him. Oh wow, though. But look at that water and scenery, though. This nice to be abuse Ha ha ha. Oh no no no. No, what the heck? Ha ha! And yeah. Oh wait, you're still alive. No 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 no! I'm actually gonna die to the Russian guy, what the heck? Okay, good. Well. Well, anyways, that's all. 60 FPS on average, exactly. Super playable and enjoyable experience. See you in the next game. Okay, and we are in control. This is a very visually impressive title. So, it's another one of those games that are very intensive. 4K using 1080p render resolution with NVIDIA DLSS. Best feature, by the way, that these cards have. DLSS is literally a lifesaver. Okay. High settings, which are the maximum. No motion blur, because you can... F 
Frick off, motion blur. Anyways, and a high ray tracing, which enables all the effects. Let's go. And yeah, above 60 FPS, at least in this room, which, yeah, doesn't really mean much since it's just in a room. So, but look at this. It drops into the 50s here, but look at that. Hey, let's go. Yeah. But look at that. Like, look at that. Look at that corner of the screen. It just looks... Like, how can you not admire the ray tracing? Oh, yes, and also the unfinished textures. Oh, wait. Did they fix the bug? It's using 7.7 .7 gigabytes of RAM. They might have fixed the bug. Oh, my God. Wait. Holy shit, they fixed it. Finally, the textures load in. Yes. Finally, they actually did it so the textures loaded. The textures look so good. Finally, they don't look like a piece of crap. The VRAM is 7.8 gigabytes. And the performance is really good, like 60 FPS plus at 4K. Yeah, it's the performance the LS has, but it looks almost like native 4K with ray tracing, so not exactly complaining. Okay, let's go to the other area with all the, the, the hiss and shit so that I can shoot some stuff. I remember that these plants were extremely intensive. And they are not as intensive as before, and they're actually loading in. They fixed a lot of bugs. I think they released an update where they fixed some bugs, but... Let's shoot some, on Let's shoot some hiss, shall we? Oh god, it's, um, uh, it's stuttering quite a lot. Maybe it's because of VRAM. Possibly because of VRAM. Probably because of VRAM. I'm saying that a lot, but... You see how it drops? And then these things, these textures are not loading, so they still haven't... I guess it's because the VRAM is just too much. Okay, I'm actually gonna die. Maybe I should focus more on killing these things. But yeah, this is not- this is stuttering kind of a lot. Maybe if you reduce the texture quality from like ultra to high, it'll fix it, I think, hopefully. Now it's smooth. Yeah, now it seems to be relatively smooth. Oh my god. Okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. Please. No. I'm sorry. Oh my god. I'm about to die. It's by the way dropping into the 50s, which is still obviously playable. Oh my god. Oh my god. Die. Oh wait. No, 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 no. I might need to leave. Bye! No! No! Are you kidding me? The rocket follows me. Yeah, well, anyways, I kind of just died. Rip. But yeah, it's a 60 FPS experience-ish with stuttering, so it's not exactly the best. Let's try something else. Let's try putting the textures on high instead of ultra. Let's see how it'll affect performance and see. Yeah, the performance isn't really affected. Because texture shouldn't affect performance. But now VRAM usage is actually the same. And the textures are still not loading. The textures look nearly identical to high. There's almost no difference. And there's no stuttering to speak of. So yeah, maybe just put the textures on high because yeah, like. As you can see, there's literally almost no change to quality. Like, maybe this is slightly softer. But I, the text is still legible. No, actually... Yeah, Ultra looks slightly better, but it came with very big stuttering issues, so... Okay, wait. So, the performance hasn't changed. But now let me put it on Ultra and see if it'll stutter. Ultra texture. See how, better, how much better it looks. Mm, performance is unchanged, but it looks slightly better. Like, very slightly better. Yeah, the game looks amazing, though, of ray tracing. Like, look at the ground reflections. Holy crap, the puddles. It just looks fantastic. No, it's not stuttering anymore anymore, 4K. I'm not sure why it was. Maybe it's because... Maybe just in that area needed to render everything. Yeah, maybe. 
Because right now it's not stuttering at all. Maybe I just, I just needed to render that area. Like, walk around a few times. Game engines are broken. Okay, yeah, it's fairly smooth now with ultra textures. So I'm going to keep the textures on ultra because it looks slightly better and the performance is virtually unchanged. I don't, I'm pretty sure that stuttering was caused by just not rendering the area. Oh my god, that's screen tearing. Well, anyways, that's all. We got around 60 FPS. It's around a 60 FPS experience with these quality settings, obviously. So yeah, that's it for control. On to the next game. Okay, so now we are playing Ghost Runner, a fast-paced platformer where we will be targeting high frames per second. Of course, you can target 60 and play at 4K, but I am going to be playing at 1440p using quality DLSS, epic settings, max, gore effect on because... Hehe, <laughs> gore. Reflex is enabled to get a... A latency reduction ray tracing is off because it's useless in this game because again fast-paced games are stupid ray tracing ray tracing on in a fast-paced game that makes sense anyways let's just play the game and it's quite a smooth and playable experience it may stutter at times because that's the nature of this game but yeah it's getting extremely good FPS the game looks amazing with these settings this is bad you have to fight your way out of here yeah, you see it just started. Oh my god, wait. God, the software is a mess. I've rebooted your acceleration module. You should be able to squeeze the timeline. If you use acceleration, that'll be air. 200 FPS almost. This feels so responsive, so smooth. And it's still an amazing experience. I'll be waiting for you. Initiating the sensory boost. You better run, but you won't last long in this state. You see, it just stuttered again. So it's just the nature of this game. Being held outside this dome zone. What? How? There we go. That's much better. Use the surfaces to your advantage. Slide to gain speed. These suits. Sorry about the no commentary. I'm just concentrating. I've already played this level like a bajillion times for benchmarking, so I know the layout very well. Can you shut up, please? Can you shut up, please? Thank you. Wow, that that's a pretty good shot. No, I don't think- What? How are they so good? There's no way, man, I'm a noob. There we go. Oh, that's cool. What the? There we go, the level's finished. And. 175 FPS on average, 103 1% lows. It's a perfectly playable, smooth, and enjoyable experience. Let's move on to the next game now. It's time for one of my favorite games No Man's Sky. And we will be playing it at 4K. <laughs> See, it vertifies it, I'm not faking it. This is a 3060 Ti. This, this this game will always prove it. 4K, 100% resolution scale, ultra maxed out settings. Everything is cranked up to its maximum. DLSS is on quality. 
So it's not native 4K, but it's close enough in terms of visual quality. And inside the base that I built like two years ago was a big project. Inside the base I built, yeah, 60s, 70s, although it is stuttering. Probably because of VRAM being at 7.8 gigabytes. Yeah, VRAM is kind of an issue for this car. That's the only real problem with it. We would have had like something like 10 gigabytes. Would have been perfect, but nah, they had to give it A. Just that it's on the edge, unfortunately. But I mean, it's still the best car price to performance wise, so I'll take it. Outside. Actually, slightly higher FPS, no. Okay, let's go inside a Pilgrim and ride it. Well, right in it. Let's go. And we are actually getting higher FPS than in the base due to nothing really being rendered. Except for a few trees and what the heck is going on. Snowy planets I think are the most intensive in the game because of, you know, having to render snow and that's pretty intensive. Although I could be wrong, but I think they're the most intensive at least. But yeah, so far at least, it's not that intensive. It doesn't seem to be dropping from 60 frames, which is obviously very good in a game like this. But especially in a sightseeing title, dropping from... Never dropping from 60 and having max graphics at 4K is just wonderful. Holy crap. Time to go on top of a large mountain and see those beautiful views. Oh my god. The particle effects in this game look particularly amazing. The textures look great. Particle effects look amazing. Weather especially. What the heck? Okay, yeah. This game is still buggy though, that's the main issue with it, is it's a little bit buggy, but small development team, you'll get what you get. And up here, yeah, around the same, 60 to 70 FPS. Okay, let's fly now. Yay. Up here, yeah, around 70. 80 FPS, it's not much different. The FPS are very consistent in this game. They don't really fluctuate like in other games too much, which is a good thing. Obviously. Yeah. Bam. What? Are you serious? You two? More of you? Are you serious? Does the menu drop FPS? Yes, by a little bit. It only drops into the low 60s. Oh, it actually drops into the 50s in this menu. Nah. Okay. Okay, yeah. DLSS does produce artifacting in the distance. Wait, let me show you. Like, just look at the textures. Yeah, but it's a little bit buggy. You can see the tree is floating on nothing and the base not being fully rendered. Like, right there. Okay, I don't know why this is... I haven't seen this bug in a very long time. Um... Yeah, that's not supposed to happen. Why is that happening? Like, seriously. That is very weird. I've never seen it do that before. Yeah, the game is pretty buggy, but it's not that level buggy. It's not like Cyber punk buggy it just disappeared how does that even wait a minute let me go let me save and restart the game quit to most select yes okay and yeah it was just a bug just a bug just a bug, nothing to worry about, just No Man's Sky being kind of buggy. But yeah, as I said in the distance, you can't really see it from here due to the refractions. Well, it actually drops into the 40s here. Um, yeah, but the, the textures on the flowers look pretty good. Look 
pretty good. I especially like the music. Boy, let me show you. It does drop into the 50s in bass. In the bass because, you know, a lot of stuff to render. But wait, let me show you. Let me go on top of the small hill. Like, move. Like, wait, yeah, like. It's a little bit shimmery there. But, anyways, that's all. Runs well, aside from the bugs, obviously. It does drop into the 50s due to the fact that this, the base is extremely CPU intensive. But outside of base, yeah, it's 60 FPS plus all of the time. Okay, let's move on to the next game now. Okay, so the final game is Valorant. It will be played at... Wait, what's... Oh yeah, it will be played at 1440p using high settings, no experimental sharpening. What's funny is that I started with a competitive shooter and now I'm also ending with a competitive shooter, which is cool. Okay, and I, by the way, I suck at this game, so don't make fun of me, please. Eyes up. Okay, so yeah, around 200 Fight. FPS, Fight. which in a game that looks like this, I would honestly expect more, even Fortnite got more. Which is like, what? Okay, not bad. Okay, three kills, not terrible. Why? Oh my god. Yes. Nice. See, FPS are okay, but not great. Not doing too bad, though. Are you kidding me? Silence. No. Defeated. What the heck was that? Are you kidding me? What? Gone. Nice.
Nice, good stuff. Slaughter for some reason. Come on, where are the people? Okay, yeah, whatever. Are you serious? Are you kidding me? Where are the people? Come on! Are you serious? Network problem? No, I'm gonna lose because of that. Yeah, I'm gonna lose. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I lost. Yep. Okay. 222 FPS on average. 158 1% lows. Pretty good. I lost, but eh, I was close to winning. Who cares? That's all. For Valorant. Okay, so... Let's answer the question. Is... Something higher end worth buying over the 3060 Ti? In my opinion, no. I don't think that even having something like a 3080 Ti, which is 50 to 60% faster than this GPU, will be worth it because it just costs so much more. Because let's put this into perspective you're paying 
three times more, or even two times, even if you take just a vanilla 3080, two times more for 40% more performance in the case of the 3080, and 50% for the 3080 Ti. So that's not enough to really move you to, I guess it is enough to move you to a different resolution tier, but the 3060 Ti just does so well in so many games that it just like makes no sense really. Unless the only reason really is future proofing but since i'm not that kind of person who would typically like you know wait like five years to buy a new gpu i think this gpu is absolutely per capable and perfect in my opinion it's a great value option it's one of the best actually gpus you could purchase in this market so yeah that would i recommend the 3060 ti absolutely it's an amazing product Excellent price to performance. It plays all the games at 1440p and even 4K with high to ultra settings. It's just just a beast. It's basically like a faster 2080 Super, so of course it's a beast. It was selling for like $800 in the past, so yeah. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys in a new video soon. Goodbye.